So we, we want to start off uh, to give you an idea of some of the, the video that uh, Orchard Park has to store. We have a, one of the, the chief has provided us some of the videos that they actually record from the body cameras. So I think we can kind of get a, an interesting feel. Uh, if you let them know what this is. Uh, this I brought in, uh, my name's Mark Pichoke, I'm the chief of Orchard Park Police. Um, the video we're gonna show is a typical traffic stop. The individual, uh, it's Mr. Brinson, he was a former Buffalo Bill. We have the Bill State in our town, fortunately. But you get to see the type of individuals we deal with on a regular basis. So, uh, I just want to say I've never been to Buffalo, so if any of these people want to be. Good qualifier. Good qualifier. Turn that up some. Hi, Mr. Brinson. I wrote you for the tent. I know. I'll get off of it. I know. All right. Who is it? I know. Yeah, I know how it works. You know how it works? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, normally I just have a guy comes in or whatever. I just pay it. It's 100 bucks. Change to me. All right. Yeah, you a rookie or you just started? Or, or, no, I've been around for a while. If I get pulled over, they just you call know, my guy. You know, know it's illegal, you know, right? You know, it's not, it's not a Just because you know somebody doesn't mean you can have an illegal vehicle. It's not a big deal, man. It's a, it's a change to me, like I said. All right. All right. Have a good night, all right? Well, All right. Who's it? Oh, yeah, I know. Sorry, I had the button. All right, a little cocky. The nice thing about this is this video saved us. The individual never came back to pay his ticket. So when he got stopped in January for tinted windows again, his license was now suspended. I found out he was going to court. I called the prosecutor. I said, I'd like to have a sit down with Mr. Brinson. He's six foot six, about 280. <laughs> so his attorney came in. And I said, I showed him the video. He goes, let me guess, you want me to go to jail? I said, no, but $100 is chump change. Maximum fine is $1,000. I think that is appropriate. Okay. <laughs> That's what we deal with. And that's a simple one. So, hello, my name is Anthony Tortola. I'm a sales engineer out of the Northeast. Uh, we're here to discuss the case study that we did for the town of Orchard Park uh, for uh, Sousa Enterprise Storage. At the time, was, it was one of the earlier uh, installations. Uh, let's give you a snapshot of what, what, what happened during that time period. Um, go ahead and you can introduce yourself. I'm Paul Pepper. I'm the uh, IT uh, administrator for Orchard Park. And we all know. Mark Pichol, Chief Mark. of Police. So this is your slide. So a good little background. Uh, we're in Erie County. We're about 14 miles south of Buffalo. We do have the stadium in our town. Uh, it is true the Pagoulas did write a check. I was there when they signed it for $1.4 million. Um, we have about 30,000 people. Um, Dr. Patrick Keen is our uh, town supervisor. Paul Warner was Paul Pepperow's uh, predecessor. It was easy. They both had Paul, so it was easy to... <laughs> um, we have some businesses. We have two DOD contractors in town. Um, we're about 40 square miles. Uh, we uh, are known for snowfall at the south end of town. Um, we, our houses, our population run the gamut from lower end on the Lackawanna border. How many of you heard of Lackawanna 6? One of those individuals still lives in our town. Um, to multi-million dollar houses with helicopters that take you back and forth to work on the south end. So that's our population. Can you tell us more about uh, the background of what started the whole I, conversation? Uh, I took over as chief four years ago. I've been on the job about 20 years. I spent 26 years in the Marines, been retired. Uh, I'm familiar with technology. I'm not an IT guy. I've been listening to some of you speak here. Uh, spoke with a bunch of individuals from Germany. I was in Germany 30 some years ago, but uh, I see what technology can do. We were one of the first agencies on the western half of New York State that went to body camps. Um, I sit on the state chief's panel. I was, uh, I was telling some individuals earlier, I was with Denise O'Donnell from Department of Justice in July talking about body camps. And we're ahead of the game. 
we knew we were going to go down this route. Department of Justice is going to mandate this within the next 18 to 24 months. All you people out there in sales group. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. The problem is not the cameras themselves. As we talked when Tony came into town, cameras are, in Mr. Brinson's word, chunk change. It's storing the data, redacting the data, and managing the data. We're looking at large data sets. All right. We had to stand up just under 100 terabyte storage ish. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the, we tested these for 18 months. We're ahead of this game, we're ahead of drones. We have two drones, we're now working on counter drone technology. We've had three drone inclusions, intrusions into our stadium, largest sports venue in the state. So we knew we needed help. I knew I could get the equipment. I have a police foundation that provided us with all of this. They dropped 37 grand for the cameras and the docking station. When I had to turn to Paul, we turned to Tony. I'm like, this is your world. I don't understand what you guys talk about, but I know I have to re I have to retain these records. The state says minimum 180 days. If it's an arrest, it's three years. If it's a certain type of arrest, permanent. Now, when you start looking at math, that's a lot of data sets. Make sense? Yeah. And this is common not just for everybody. Unfortunately, what I saw this summer when I was working with the Department of Justice, we're seeing agencies pull these things because they can't afford the data. They can't afford managing their debt. So that's the next challenge for you guys. Thank you. Excellent. So this was the customer need. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, so I guess um, I've, I've only been with the, the town of Orchard Park for uh, about eight months now. But um, I guess if you look back at the history of Orchard Park, it's, it's a very small town, and we really didn't have a network infrastructure per se. Um, so as it grew, we kind of piecemealed our storage requirements. You know, we put a NAS unit here and one here. Um, it, what we thought was something good today with a little bit of uh, future outlook, it, it just, you know, you, you can imagine the, the, the puzzle that we would have to put together. You know, fast forward to 2016, we have what, you know, what, what Chief Petrolik is, is speaking of here, the body cameras. Not only do, do we have body cameras, we have surveillance uh, video cameras of our town buildings. We're looking at pulling in surveillance video camera from our, our local school districts. What do we do with all that software? Well, I'm sorry, what do we do with all, with all that video? You can, you can imagine what the size of a, uh, a few seconds to hours of video, uh, that size of data compared to just say a, a text document or Word document. That is just mind-boggling. Mind so we had to find something that was not only uh, feasible for us, but it had to be scalable and it had to be reliable. So that's why we turned to HP and SUSE to, to help us with these requirements. Just, just to touch on one thing, all this video is evidence, right? So it has to be secure. That was the other component of this. How many of you guys remember when Flight 3404 when it crashed in 2009? Clarence, all right, same night, Mo Hassan beheaded his wife. That made Fox News. How many of you guys remember that? I was there when he came to the station. I was the afternoon lieutenant. The amount of data we had to pull from his TV station off of their servers, I mean, the whole event is on a video. But that whole thing was what allowed us to convict him. So the, the evidence component of this is also huge. That's why it had to be a secure solution. <coughs> So some of the use cases we saw for Orchard Park was, well, actually we went over quite easily, you know, not only just retrieve, copy it, but retrieve it and, and do it in a timely fashion, secure it and make sure it's robust. Uh, no single point of failure, no case where, you know, one drive goes and next thing you know, the chief can't, you know, can't upload his video and I can't drive through town. Um, so <laughs> we made sure. One time. <laughs> So, and, and, and anytime you guys have any questions, please jump in. You know, this is good. I always like to be interactive, uh, switch questions for the guys. Uh, uh, just keep it lively, you know, and a nice conversation. So, you guys, oh, go ahead. Explain to us how many officers you have who are pulling, how many are pulling video at once, so to speak, and to get an idea how large is this? Uh, currently have 32. I'm flying back tomorrow. I'm hoping to get the other three. I have 35. I have 51, 35 sworn, I have 51 total employees. Every officer, including myself, has one. Um, 
So if you have somebody making a traffic stop, 90 second event, ditch, unless you're issuing the ticket, five minutes. Officer makes 10 traffic stops or has 10 citizen contacts a day. It's not just traffic stops, it's EDPs. You're talking a large data set on a daily basis. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Ma'am? Ma'am. So we've been hearing a little bit here and there from uh, other police departments that potentially the budget, because of this impact of storage, could affect budgets for officers on the street. Absolutely. Um, so this would impact, so the, it's not necessarily one cause the other, but the money that you save, that actually pulls from the same budget potentially for your other jobs. I'm going back to fight a budget. My budget uh, is about $8 million a year. Okay. Plus or minus and that's the company of all IT officers? No, that, that's just police. IT has their own That's not the budget. IT, yeah. Our, our town budget's approaching $30 million. Okay. Um, I'm the biggest component of it. Um, the panel I sit on for the state, uh, I've seen agencies as large as 150, Greece, Pat Phelan pulled all his car cameras and video cameras out uh, and body cams because he couldn't manage it. When I first put this into play, I started moving this way in 2014, I told them I need a sworn officer, it's typically a captain or a lieutenant, to manage the evidence. I brought them all the case studies, brought them all the you know, best practices of everything. They agreed, they approved it, and the next day they said, stop. We were 15 minutes into the interviews for a patrol captain. They said, we don't have that 150 with benefits and everything to pay. I go, okay, my assistant chief's gonna do it. Well, no, he needs to do his job, I go, I don't have a choice. We've already started. We opened the box. So Indianapolis, if you guys want to go back, look online, uh, Indiana took their retention period. It was nine, 90 days. They bumped it to four years. State police is pulling all their car cameras and body cams. Uh, city of Indianapolis is pulling all of their stuff. How does that help us do our job in an era of transparency? I'll be the first one to tell you, and Tony's seen a lot of our video. You know, video is, it's not perfect by any means. You have malfunctions. If you're in a fight, things go wrong. And what the human eye sees under stress is one to three degrees. It's about a thumbnail because of auditory exclusion, visionary exclusion. You know, so you can't go, well, didn't you see that guy with the gun on the corner of your eye? Not a fucking chance. <laughs> I was looking at the guy three feet away from me with a knife about this stand. <laughs> You told me to limit the five F bombs, so I guess four. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Chief, the, uh, how much more time does this take for an officer to be able to document all this stuff? They finish a shift, they dock this thing, do they have to go back and the, the individual officer is easy. All right, working with Tony and how we set this up, working with Paul and previous Paul and the company we got them from, Prima Facie, which is uh, safety. Star. Yeah, safety, safety vision. Safety vision. Um, other agencies went to hot docking where you'd have to swap them out and I saw the, the boondoggle they went through so we bought one for every officer you take it, you put it it's about the size, a little bit smaller but thicker, you take it start of your shift, clip it on either to your shoulder or your center, you use it you come back, you download it you then have about 10 or 15 minutes for the end of your shift, if there's something you want flat hey Chief, assistant chief, lieutenant, save this. This was an arrest. I'm going to need it. Then it gives moves into a secondary storage unit. Or this guy said I was a flaming buffalo. You're going to get a personnel complaint. <laughs> save it. Now here's where body cameras have come into to play. A lot of people, we probably get six to eight personnel complaints a month. 99% of the time, they're bullshit. There is that 1% where our officers did wrong and we're human too. We have 10% just like anywhere else. We need to fix that. But when an individual comes in and makes a claim and they put it in writing, now it becomes a crime. Because then I can pull up the camera and go, oh, so you, my officer called you a beep. Yeah, let's look at this. Officer, I don't have time for your fucking beep, beep. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it. Sorry, I want to go. No, you're under arrest now. You, you filed the written statement. So it's a misdemeanor in New York State. So it doesn't take a lot of time for them. What kills us is when we get requests, which we're going to cover. Okay. You know, you've got to down those requests under a Freedom of Information Act. That's what kills us. If we're sending it to the courts, we don't have to redact it. They're law enforcement. Right. So. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs>
So go ahead, Paul. This is a, this is a slide on a camera. Make sure so. I shut them both up. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, so basically this is just an overview of, of our, our body cameras and the software that we use. And as uh, Chief Patrol had, had, had mentioned, the, the, the officers, we have uh, docking stations, uh, eight port docking stations. So they just come in at the end of their shift, dock it, and the, the video is uploaded automatically to our storage server. Uh, but it's key that that uh, chain of custody is, is, is key with, with any of this uh, evidence, uh, video evidence. So that, that's what drove us to say, hey, we need to really house this locally. We don't want to put it up on the cloud. We fought with this decision. Do we put it up on the cloud? Do we keep it locally? You know, who, who else is going to see this? And who else is going to have their fingers in this pie? Uh, so we said, we really need to keep this here. And, and that, that was the driving force by, uh, by us putting it. Okay. And, and here's, here's just a, uh, the other video that we pull in. We have uh, 30, currently we have 30 cameras that we used to monitor our, our, our buildings, um, but we get requests all the time. That number's growing. Yeah. Um, we're, we're looking at a couple of pole cameras, which are movable. We have a huge shopping center where shoplifters and car larcenies are a daily event. And we only have X amount of bodies, but if I can put a camera on a pole, I may not stop it, but I'll know what that license plate was. Yeah, so, so we, we could look back, you know, days, weeks, months, months back if, if there was an, an incident or, or yes. Right. Evidence. Yeah. It's evidence. Yeah. That, that, that's the biggest issue. Who owns that data? We have an issue that's going on with the county about data. We have a county RMS system, um, and there's been some FOIA requests that have gotten out. We had a uh, brutal double. Uh, we had a murder suicide earlier this year, and somehow that got leaked out through another county agency. And the county saying, well, it's our data. You're using our county records management system. So myself and the county controller and the county executive have a nice discussion in a room with me. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go well. So, right. yeah, so, so this stays our, this is this our is data our we until we, until we per data. The other problem is you, all uh, evidence data from body cams or car cameras can be uploaded through like Taser or whatever. But you're all eventually going to end up in evidence.com, which my understanding is part of Amazon. I sit on a state counterterrorism board. There are agencies, there's a government agency, which I won't name, that pays $600 million a year to store everything in the cloud. If we pay $15 a month per unit, all right, is that's this year. What's next year? If I need to retrieve it immediately, because I need to investigate something, how do I do it? What if I can't? And then who owns it? So that's why we made the decision to keep it in-house. That's why Tony came. <laughs> to give an idea real quick of the, of the total expense for you guys, what's the expense associated with outfitting the officer with the camera? We were under 35,000 for cameras and docking stations. There was a training component. Uh, we have training on it two hours annually. It's okay. one of our smaller. Um, it's what the hundred terabytes cost us. And yeah, that. they had a good pricing from HP, uh, being a, a state uh, contract. So I think if I remember, what all the ancillaries about uh, one one fifteen to one twenty. It was under one forty. I know that. Yeah, much. it was. It was roughly okay. that time period. Uh, that okay. that price amount. Yeah. But we can see going forward, I mean, that is just going to grow immensely. We're, right. we're going to get 80 cameras, 82 cameras from the school. Right. We're looking at doubling what we have around town. Wow. You know, we're going to be, we, we're starting to use drones on game days. Why? It's not like we're not a target. We've already caught four nationals taking pictures. Right? Please keep that. It's not just us. It's other yeah. large venues. You know, they're, oh, I'm just here taking pictures. Okay. I always do that. Yeah. So with this, so with this implementation, it's it's very easy for us to scale up if we right. need. If we and, need and a to. lot of that 140 was the initial, like uh, I see the hump cost. Then it becomes more, uh, it becomes more econ you know, economical later on as you want to add more data, uh, because you have to you have the infrastructure set up that you don't have to really necessarily keep doubling the infrastructure. You just start doubling your your disk space. So it's it's not exactly. It, it kind of falls off after a while. Got it. Uh, so I hand up. Park, um, is it going to, do you think it'll be a, a standard trend to keep that data 
in-house versus putting it out on the cloud? Is there like some standardizations that take place? Or There's only five agencies in Western New York that have them. Um, okay. One's thinking of Delta because of cost. Wow. It's cost. Okay. It, it's not the getting it. You know, we, we, we cross that hump as Tony talked about. It. It's managing. It, it, it's another body. My assistant chief, you know, we don't work eight hour days. Um, he probably spends a third of his day downloading and redacting FOIL requests. It has to be a sworn, typically, command officer. And I don't have a spare lieutenant or captain later on. Maybe yeah. tomorrow. And that's where the cost is. Once we get through the hardware, that's something you could have to calculate, budget, and then that kind of, you could plan for it. It's the other cost that really is, is where so, the money is. So put that into perspective. <clears throat> Race heard of Seattle, right? Seattle came under a Department of Justice decree in 2009 for use of force issues. They forced them to go to body camps for the patrol division. 2,200, 2,400 officers. I can't remember the number of actual patrol officers. They had to hire 15 civilians and one lieutenant just to manage the body camera data. So that kind of gives you a perspective. You're, you're talking. Say 15 civilians with benefits, 100 grand a year. A lieutenant with benefits, a buck fifty. So under two million a year just in personnel costs to manage some data. Centers. And they have to do it because Department of Justice said you'll do it. Yeah, it's one of those things where going to Amazon, going to any other cloud provider doesn't get rid of that cost. That's where the cost right. relies. And it's I always I hope it stays in house. To it be ha it with has you. to. I mean, yeah. talking with Denise Denise O'Donnell and I talk probably once every three months. It's coming. It'll be just like body armor. They'll pay for half, we'll pay for half, but there's no money for personnel. And I guess you said if they're going to mandate it nationwide, I guess they're creating jobs at once. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> but it's going to be on the taxpayer. Right. Of yeah. Course. Right. It's always on the taxpayer. It's an unfunded <laughs> mandate, just like everything else. Yeah. Right. Any other questions before we move on? So, what we proposed uh, back about a, a year ago, a we proposal, not implementation, was using uh, SUSE Enterprise Storage 2, um, setting up a, a nice uh, details for the POC. The POC kind of was like the implementation. Um, so we had a, a bunch of OSDs, monitors, service nodes. Uh, what we used was HP's reference architecture, uh, which was at, uh, we, what we say 80 terabytes was like the minimum we like to see, and which was a perfect fit for this uh, environment. Um, yeah, again, down here, so we had an initial uh, of 80 terabytes of, of initial storage to be broken up for, and there's more detail, like 20 terabytes for body cameras, 20 for the, uh, what I, I call eye in the sky, but you guys call them surveillance. And then those other 10 terabytes was for a departmental. Uh, you have a couple of departments that have a file store that's on, that's on the, uh, the set storage now. So that was pretty much uh, our solution. And... Um, I put this in here. I almost think everybody here knows what software-defined storage is. Is anybody here? You know, we'll do want to do a quickie, quickie review. You know, uh, I just put this in there because you know, marketing makes me. Um, <laughs> so it's. Nice <laughs> so we say that you know, with software-defined storage, you're going to start seeing it start to displace your traditional storage. And the reason behind that mindset is with traditional storage, it's it's usually when you have to update it to get more storage, it's, it's a forklift replacement. You don't, uh, you don't end up just saying, hey, I could just keep attaching drives, keep attaching servers. Um, what we do at SUSE, uh, we use open source technology, Ceph, uh, to bring in this software-defined storage. And some of the things why you want to do it is for improved agility, uh, increased flexibility, and you want to decouple the software from hardware, which is very important, uh, although HP has been a great partner. If, for some reason, it, uh, the vendor sours that relationship with the customer. They could kind of turn around and use another vendor if they like to. Um, and of course, reducing your CapEx and OpEx. Um, the, the, to, to try to spec this out on your traditional storage frame was probably 10 times the amount. And we actually went down that road with another vendor. And uh, it was pretty painful. Any questions? So SUSE Enterprise Storage, of course. I don't think I have enough of the uh, awards. This is an older slide. This is what happens when you submit uh, two months in advance. One of the, it's funny, uh, we have a, our competitor who actually went out and, and purchased the, the technology, has not won a single award. 
um, we keep bringing forward the technology in a fast pace and a, and a reliable pace. So seamlessly adapt to changing business needs and data. As, as the chief has said, you know, as time goes on, more and more of these restrictions, these changes in retention policies are going to come up. We have to be able to deliver this in a highly scalable and highly secure fashion. You talk about highly scalable. Again, I love technology. We just stood up a training simulator, first one in the southern part of the county. Uh, it's right next to Paul's <laughs> office, so when we start using it more, he's going to hear a lot of bang. Well, explosions. I hit the ground when I hear it. <laughs> All right. It's a room about this size. Uh, the police foundation paid for it. Like police foundation, it's about 150 grand. What it's going to allow us to do is bring people in there. Uh, on the 22nd, I'm bringing some bills in at the request of them, some upload bills. We're having some attitude issues. So we're going to put them in a situation and see how they react in the domestic or how they react with a knife coming at them. And see if they shoot somebody and go to jail for 30 years and have a $7 million lawsuit. But it's going to allow all our officers to make mistakes there so that they don't make them on the street. But guess what we have to do? We have to document that. How do we document it? Video. Video. We already started talking about, you know, we're going to be courting. Each officer has done three domestics. He's done four car stops in the simulator. Uh, we bring the guys in in red man suits. Once the video is done, we see red, it's a big phone suit. Mm -hmm. All right. We see how he did during the arrest procedure. All right, did he control himself? Did he good use verbal skills? That's going to be a whole other data set we got to look at. But it's going to save us. And it's going to show to the public we're doing everything we can. Did you guys put your uh, 911 calls on the system of all the 911? 911 is controlled by the county. They own nine, it's a county wide 911 system. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> we, we average 30 some thousand 911 calls. Not all of them are totally tracked because a lot of them get transferred to other agencies. That's that's a huge set. We average our call volume of actual document and we have to respond is 35, 40,000 a year. We're busy. Um, you mentioned about partnering with a school. What, what is that? Like Orchard Park Central School District. Okay. Um, we've had times where kids break into schools. It happens. We've had times where silly things happen. But uh, the superintendent of the schools, Matt McGarry, is a great, great partner, great relationship. They now have video in all of their schools. Right. God forbid, um, one of the FBI Academy classes I went to, I sat with the lieutenant from Camden, Ohio. He had that shoot, active shooter situation out there. If we have something like that, I can, boom, bring it up on dispatch. Lower East Wing High School, that's where the threat is. Now we can vector our officers there. Right. And in that type of situation, first thing we have to do is stop the killing, which means my guys are going hunting. I've made no bones about it. If you come here and you try to harm our kid, we will hunt you down and kill you. I, mean, I hold no issues with that. If you try to hurt our kids, we will, we will stop you. But it will allow our officers to get information from dispatch in real time. Are you guys managing the storage of that surveillance set? We okay. won't store the school data, but we have to figure out. We were just talking about yeah, this, this an hour ago. How do we manage that? Yeah. Over These are IP address, addresses. Yeah, we're, this, we're at the beginning stages world. of this. Okay. Thank you. So one of the great features of our, our technologies is truly unified storage. What, uh, what Enterprise Storage 4 we was released. We have the object store, we have uh, block storage, and, and we also now have file storage with CephFS, which is very difficult for me to say. Um, so again, we have a lot of, it's, it, it reduces your, your operational expense because now you have one, one technology managing all the different types of storage needs you have inside your environment. And this is what 4 looks like, and I hope this is the right slide because again, this is two months old. So these are all the things that we've done with inside of four, which was released yesterday or today. Um, again, everything you need from top to bottom as far as infrastructure and services is inside of, I actually want to, I'm trying to get to the, the slide where we actually show what the, the solution looked like, because that's the one I'm, I, I'm most proud of. Any questions before I jump in, please? No, okay. So yeah, again, Ceph is what we build it on. It's the most popular OpenStack uh, storage back end. Uh, a lot of people know that, everybody thinks maybe Swift. Uh, we do, it's 
for one of the most cost effective, I think we're down to, uh, actually David would be able to tell me, cost per gigabyte per month is typically? Uh, it's around a dollar. It's around, yeah, it's, I was gonna say it's a dollar or it's just under a dollar. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, cost of acquisition, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, per day per month, you know, the goal is to be under penny per gig. What do you mean goal? Because DOJ's that's on their horizon. Yeah, so it, it depends on the exact hardware configuration. Right? So what does that mean to the end user? So, so depending on the system, you can get it down to I've seen it as low as point oh oh eight cents per gig per month. That's something you might want to look at having discussions with DOJ on. Right. So they're moving into the next phase of this within a year and a half. Yeah. It's one of those things where as technology advances, generally when the advances, it also becomes cheaper. So that starts lowering that the cost. Sense. Yeah. So again. So this is what a nice little eye chart. So this is what it looks like on a technology level. So you have your client servers at the top, either Windows, Linux, or Unix. You have applications using Swift or S3. So if you have applications that you are already leveraging Amazon with S3, this plugs right into it. A, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not a developer, so I don't know exactly what it would take to point it to ours, but I know it's really not, it's not heavy lifting. And of course, now you have the file share with CFFS. Uh, at the very bottom, you see that we have this, the storage servers, that's where, that's, uh, where the actual storage happens, where the, the, the data is resided. Then you have the monitor servers, that's where the servers do all the, what's called the crush algorithm. Uh, the placement maps, so the brains of uh, the storage array resides. And of course, all in the middle is RADOS, is the technology that, that binds it all together. And you can see here how many code developers there are, and these are our partners, or, or not our partners, but people are actually coding to Ceph. Um, and you see it really covers the gambit of storage and, and hardware vendors and OS vendors. Any questions? This is my favorite one here, you have the CERN labs. Being a little bit of a nerd, seeing that there, I love that there. So that's again, very simple overview from a, a simplified uh, view of what enterprise storage looks like. Uh, the file system you could use is ButterFS if you choose like block um, or EX, uh, ext4 or xfs. Any questions? So again, I choose the last slides. Um, these are all the features we have. It's aligned with the enterprise. Any questions? I don't want to read all these to you, right? And plus we have more video, which I want to show you. <laughs> you gotta see some of the video. <laughs> the DWI one, if it wasn't for the arrest, it's pretty fun. <laughs> so this is an overview of what it looks like from a, a server's aspect. And actually funny, if you kind of remember what this looks like, when we look at the final build out what we did at Orchard Park, it kind of looked very similar. And the technology we leveraged in Orchard Park was the iSCSI gateway, because they're connecting back to a Windows server. Uh, so it allowed us to have that heterogeneous uh, access to the system. Uh, here are the use cases. Content storage for media and scientific organizations, obviously media, TV stations, radio stations, storing their, their shows, their radio uh, programs. Uh, scientific, it's all the the data, I mean, like CERN labs, for example, when they run a test, it's like 10 terabytes a second that they're dumping onto the set file storage. So when people ask me, can this scale? I'm like, yeah, I think, it, I think it's got that covered. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not too worried about scaling. I'm not worried about actually getting the data on there. Um, to me, the most important thing is making sure, getting the data on there, retrieving it, and it, it's always there, it's always available. Video surveillance, yeah. This is exactly the use case we were talking about today. And object and block store. Uh, some of the stuff we could do is, is uh, just to just back up. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Uh, as storage gets to be larger, tape libraries are becoming less uh, attractive to do backups, or at very least, uh, backing them up, backing up live data with tape is not very, I don't even think it happens anymore. Um, so this is why you don't, you could bring it to, you bring this in and you start pushing your data over to the storage and then you use your tape library and you could take 24 hours to back it up and you'll be fine. 
Virtual machine storage, like we said, uh, the number one backend storage for OpenStack, but you also could use it for Hyper-V in VMware. Um, again, that's another place where data is exploding. I mean, I look about my, just my lab machine at home. You know, one terabyte was a happy lab machine. Now one terabyte is, that's my laptop at this point. That's great, so what did it look like? And I apologize, I am not a person that does drawings, and I tried my best. I know he was laughing over there because I set this up. So this is my drawing of what it looked like at the very end. So you can see, uh, these were the storage nodes. It was, there was four HP ProLiant DL380s. Uh, RAW was 240 ter uh, terabytes of data. We chose to have a three failure domain, so we replicated the data three times. So evidentially ever to me was, uh, no brainer to make sure this is the way we we're going to go. <clears throat> we used HP Flex Fabric switches in the background uh, with 10 gig Ethernet. Uh, I think we were at 500 IOPS when we were pushing data back and forth. It was actually the one thing I was a little nervous about watching the video from the Ceph storage. I was like, well, I might be a little choppy, and, and it wasn't. No, it worked really worked a lot better than I anticipated. Again, the uh, monitor servers. There was three of them. I only have two in the picture. Um, the DL 360s, not a lot of storage on those. Those are where the compute power has to, has to happen. Um, then we had Windows 10 clients running, Safe Division client connecting around in, in the background. And uh, I guess my picture didn't draw up. There's no servers here. Uh, Windows 2012 R2 uh, was in the background storing. And this is where the share was. Any questions? Oh, geez. Well, there wasn't a lot. It was 16. I think it was I think, 16. I think 16 gigs. Okay. So if you if you look on, on uh, you know look on our website, we have the HP reference architecture where the David spec'd out what what we certified, um, and I think that's what same thing HP's skewed at this point. Um, we went with exactly the only thing I, I I always tell people one thing we I didn't notice. Um, we didn't buy patch cables. You need a lot of patch cables. <laughs> and that was one of the things we were doing that one, we, we, got this, we got this stood up in less than two days, right? And one day we spent cutting and making patch cables. They were dripping. They came up to my office and uh, <laughs> you and Scott were dripping. Yeah. Just making, I, I couldn't believe, I, I, and the worst part, you look at the, uh, the manifest of what you're ordering. HP loves to put everything down. So after like the 17th line, you kind of go, yeah, okay, that just looks good. I didn't check for patch cables. I sh that's what, that was on me. So anyway, so it took us about two days to stand this up and get it going. And as we started doing some testing, where we just kept the camera on in, in the room, walking around with the camera, just trying to have some fun. Um, so in less than three days, they went, uh, we went live. There wasn't even a, a wait. So. Well, out of curiosity, the, the four storage nodes, are those all in the same location? Yes, they are. Today, they are. Yeah, this was actually, we were talking with the original Paul, that this was like a phase one approach where we have to get this stood up right away. And then moving forward, start to have conversations like, well, I know they have, uh, I'm not sure you say it's, it's Barrio, so Barrio S backup, doing the tape backup, but we also said we would like to be able to replicate this data <laughs> offsite just in case of a flood. Or, although you guys get flooded, that'd be really bad. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. We were talking about this earlier. It's not just video and stuff, but our record stuff is all in the basement. And guess what runs above all those record rooms? Yeah, lots a lot of water pipes. Right? A lot of water pipes and septic pipes. So now yeah. we're looking at secondary offsite storage, which may happen in the not too distant future, right. which means he's going to be coming back back. I am. So your ice doesn't get where it's running on all four nodes? They were running on two nodes. We selected two nodes to run to get the multi-path uh, configuration going. We didn't want to push too much. The one interesting thing we, we discovered, uh, the first time we set up the ice SCSI gateway, we set it up to the VM guests. The, these, were, these were VM guests. Didn't like it too much. We, and we took two hours to try to format a uh, 20 terabyte uh, volume. We switched it to the host. It took less than like two minutes. So there's one of those things where we wouldn't think it would make that much of a difference. It made a difference. Yeah, we know how Microsoft behaves. No offense to Microsoft in the room. 
Anyhow, any other any questions? Sure. I mean, this actually it is as simple as it looks. I mean, so next when they need to have more data, all they can do is, is bolt on more of those storage nodes. Like all this stuff down here stays the same. All I know is if that room goes down, if we get a November storm, we had seven and a half feet of snow in my house. I had to shut down the town. I t typically, when the shit hits the fan, I get the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> this room, Paul could sit at home, and if he's pissed off one day, say, <laughs> Don't piss me off. The whole town, <laughs> phone systems, yeah. all our data, all our Everything. records, my ability to operate things in the cars, gone. This room has to be highly protected. Because okay. without it, we're done. Yeah, so we say st snowstorms. I go out there to meet the town board. He, he asks us to come back. I get there. He goes, yeah, it's going to be a couple of inches of snow. So we get, we get in the car. Feet. We get in the car and literally from the hotel <laughs> to, the, to the town meeting, it, like just dumps unholy hell on us, and I'm like, oh my god, this is not, not this is not normal. I got pictures of your XU video, of my kids skiing off my roof. Where am I? I saw another hand go up a second. So to explain the storage that you touched on there, say you doubled the four to eight OSD storage nodes. So you don't need more monitor servers after that? Nope. The three that are there. On nope. All that? <laughs> yeah, it's it's the it's it's weird. You start off with three right away, and then you kind of hang out there for like you said, like a hundred storage nodes. Then you add two more. But what I was talking with some of the vendors uh, during the break and the technology thing, as Tony said, this is scalable. The next generation of body cams, like car cameras, certain car cameras, the Panasonic Arbitrator, I believe, is one. You can actually tap into it live at dispatch. That worked for Erie County sheriffs. They had a shooting, they could see where the bad guy was because the, the uh, deputy's car got shot up and he bailed. So they could now see what was going on. Body cams are going to go that route. You're going to be able to tap in that data line. I can't imagine what the, what's the word you call for stuff coming through? Bandwidth? Pipe? Yeah, bandwidth. There's only yeah. so bandwidth. much bandwidth. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you guys that, that thing, you know, this thing. <laughs> so I just, well, so we the questions. That's the next step. And that's going to be a larger data. It's going to be larger bandwidth. Yeah. Back, to the, back to that question. Is it, Paul, is it, are those HD cameras or are they are? They are HD cameras. They are, yeah. yes. A lot of it is, yes. You should so. see the redaction side of this. Yeah. When a civilian wants it. It's ungodly. Mm -hmm. It's another thing you guys got to work on. So do those cameras that run from the start of the shift through the end? No. Are they turn them on for contacts? You, you turn them on. Okay. I have a permissive use policy. If you want it. Use it. If you don't want it, don't use it. Otherwise, it's a big union negotiation. I'm not getting into that much. <laughs> I speak about body cams all across the state. But what they do is they'll turn it on. And typically, it runs with a green light on top, so you know it's on. When you press the button, you heard that little beep in there? It has a look back feature. Ours is set up to seven seconds. It can be set as far as 30. So when you heard that beep, the camera's already recording. But you're going to get a couple of seconds of look back. So that you have only so much data. Nobody's ever come close. It's about two and a half, three hours. Nobody's ever come close to filling in a bunch. That answers your question. Yeah. I'm I'm getting the uh, the playoff music from the guys in the back. So uh, maybe two more questions. You may have already asked how much data approximately does each officer have per shift? I, I can't say there's an average. Some officers, just like anything else, are more aggressive. I'll just give you, give you an example. That was a one minute video. It's 85 meg. The domestic is eight minutes. And it's half a gig. And the reason the domestic ones are important to record is these people go in different directions. We had a domestic recently. The woman stripped their clothes and naked. And I actually ended up backing up. It was during the day. She's like, we turn the body cams off. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> well, she says we're in her house. I go, great. And if we turn it off, she's going to say we did something. There's no right. No requirement for us to turn it off. So, last, so, qu last so question. How, how long have you been live with the system now? About a year. Yeah. Okay. Roughly. You started testing in 14. Right. Okay. So you've been live for about a year. You've had you, you had funding challenges associated with trying to pull this package together, right? Which we can anticipate. Yeah. We can anticipate that most people in your position would have those similar issues. When you sit down 
with your fellow chief of police. That's why I go and teach all this, so you don't make the same silly mistakes I do. So that, that's what I was going to ask. What's their reception been like when you talk to them about how you tackled this challenge? Because clearly, very good. Oh. And, and the policy development, because it's not just the system and everything. But you have to have a policy. How do you implement it? Okay. How does that affect union issues? How does that affect privacy issues? Yeah, there is no standard right now, so you know we have to start somewhere, and I think right. everyone's yeah, looking not, for we that. We're one of the first ones in the state. Same thing. We have the first drone policy in the NFL. No oh, really? I, I'm not the smart guy, but I know the people to ask the questions, <laughs> on, so we can get there. Be ahead of the game. Well, they got to protect, you know, Ryan, the head coach. <laughs> Please, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> he has his own individual drone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, just one more. We got. Okay, just really quick. If we were to talk to other police departments to help them. Uh, you, you could use me as an example, have them contact. That's, thank you, that's perfect. But who should we start with, though, in the organization? Who can we say? Well, you can ask the right questions, so just start the conversation. You're probably going to talk to the chief, if not some type of administrative captain or lieutenant. Okay. okay. I, I'd be more than willing to stay afterwards offline. And Thank you. So I'm assuming this one was the DOI, right? Yeah. The shorter one. I don't think we have eight minutes. That's funny. Hmm? Now, this one is... He's doing oh, yeah. a walk and turn test. Three, I'm walk showing you three. I want you to go all the way to nine. You're going to take nine short choppy steps, go. turning yourself Don't around. And then you're going to take nine yeah. more going back. I'm going to show you three more. One, two, oh, three. You want your uh, your toes to touch the heel of your foot, okay? You're, while you're doing this, I want you to keep your arms at your side. Look at your feet. Once you start, don't stop. Do you understand all that? Okay. And count out loud. Go ahead. One, two, three. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's trying to get away. <laughs> Look, he's still going. He's still going. Is he still going? They shut him down. Yeah. How many did you just take? Okay. What do you think? Okay. Are you done with the test? No, sir. So, is that police officer also have the camera going? Can. I see a light, or is he not with the camera? Same Okay. That's triple data. Wow. That's correct. Yeah, that's exactly right. You see why I like this camera? That's great. Again, the Mark, uh, this isn't time for favors, okay? What well, this is a roadside screener. I need you to take a deep breath in and exhale into the straw. If you mess with this test, you can get a ticket, okay? Right, guys, I, um, so deep breath in I want to thank and exhale chief, going out. Do you understand that? That was a great okay, session. Uh, we're, oh, I'm here all week. Uh, we run into the hallway. I want to thank Sam. Okay, and we're turning on, so I'm here